So good morning, everyone. I'm Asher Barak. I'm an engineering manager. I'm working on uh, Alexa, and I wanted to share with you today um, the story of what we guys are doing um, at Amazon in the context of the new LLMs. Um, just a word. Does anyone here, show of hands, uh, use a personal assistant? Okay, nice. Uh, some of the people. Um, so, as you know, uh, Alexa is one of the leaders in this uh, market segment. Uh, Google also has one. Um, so does Apple, Siri. Did you know that uh, Samsung has one? Anyone? Show of hands. Bixby, right. We have a winner. Um, so just uh, a few words about the vision behind Alexa. Uh, Alexa is part of a vision uh, which is called ambient computing which is about us not having to carry around our computing with us. So if we have the computing in the form of a phone in our pocket or a, or a smartwatch on our hand, uh, imagine you can walk into wherever and say, let's continue watching the movie I started yesterday and it just shows up on the screen in the room you're in. So this is the vision of uh, ambient computing. And um, when... Uh, the LLM started showing the new uh, capabilities they're showing now, um, it was starting to become evident that everything is going to change in our world. Is this supposed to be working? Okay, I'll do it from here. Okay. So everything is going to change and why is everything going to change? Uh, I'm gonna show you what, um, the way uh, assistants work today. And I think this will give us some context and help us understand uh, why this is going to change our world. So this is the customer. We are always at Amazon. We always start from the customer. And the customer says something like, okay, I, Alexa, I want to, I want to, uh, what's the weather like in Jerusalem tomorrow? Okay, so first thing we do with this is we do some speech recognition and we transform this to text. And then we do something we call intent detection, which is trying to understand what it is the user actually wants to do. In this case, the user probably wants to know what the weather is going to be like. And then we, we do something which we call entity resolution, where we find uh, the sort of parameters for what the user is trying to find out. So in this case, uh, we need to know which location is interesting for the user and what time. And we do that from the, we get that from the text. We know it's tomorrow in Jerusalem. And then we have what we call an intent handling, which is some sort of mechanism that in this case probably goes to a weather service and gets the weather for tomorrow in Jerusalem. And then we say, it's gonna be sunny. Don't forget your sunglasses. Um, it's June, it's probably gonna be sunny in Jerusalem. Okay, so this works quite well for a large range of, uh, of intent. You can see we do weather, we do music, we do smart home stuff, we do lots of things. But assume that I have a follow-up question. My follow-up question is, okay, it's gonna be sunny, what should I wear? And when we start thinking about this, you can see that we have a bit of a scaling problem here. Well, first of all, when the user said, what, what should I wear? I need to find out what he wants in the context of his previous conversation, right? And this could be getting very complicated very quickly, right? Think of uh, complicated dialogues, the user changes their mind, the user is interested in new things suddenly. So we need to understand things in, in the context of a bigger dialogue. And even if it's not across in, the, in a different dialogue, what's the intent in this case, right? I'm asking about what I should wear. So I'm interested in knowing what's the proper attire for the specific weather. Am, am I gonna hire an engineer to handle this specific intent? What do I wear in specific weather? Um, that's interesting, but it doesn't scale, right? Someone is gonna want this. And if we think about this resolution, we're probably gonna have thousands, if not more than thousands of intents. And it doesn't even have to be a dialogue, right? I can say something like, Alexa, what should I wear for my Sunday talk? Of course, your cool LLM shirt. Um, but there's no way of, of, of 
thinking in advance of all the things that people are going to want to do with their personal assistant. So, as we know, LLM can handle all of this, and this is why LLM is going to change everything we do. We, any, anyone with access to GPT uh, API can now create an assistant which can, ha which can have a conversation, and no one is going to take less from their uh, favorite Alexa. So everything is going to change. Let's put the LLM in the center and see how that's wor that works for us. So we'll, of course, have to build another cube here. Uh, we'll call it the orchestrator. Um, and this cube will, uh, will do the um, speech recognition and we'll call the LLM. Of course, we don't call LLMs directly. Someone needs to uh, construct a prompt and then uh, relay the answer back to the user. And let's ask it what's the weather going to be like in Jerusalem tomorrow. And of course, it doesn't know. So it answers confidently that it's going to snow in Jerusalem, of course. Don't forget your scarf. Um, this is, uh, this is a property of LLMs, we all know that. They're, they're hallucinating and they don't really know to say, I don't know. You need to put it in the prompt and you also need to put it at the end of the prompt. Otherwise, it will forget about it. Okay, so what we need to do here is something called RAG, uh, which I guess most people know about, retrieval augmented generation, or in general, we need to make this uh, LLM aware of the world. We need it to be able to reach out to the world and get information in this case, but not only get information. Uh, an assistant, if we want the assistant to be useful, it needs to be able to do stuff, right? It needs to turn on your lights. And it, it needs to uh, add something to your shopping cart. So we need uh, to introduce a new concept into the mix, which is tools or actions. And this is the word we use for the set of APIs that the uh, LLM can uh, use in order to provide you with the things you want. So I'm gonna, you're gonna see a few of these uh, bars. These are things you can search. And there are also some links if we share the, uh, the slides uh, later. This is from an article called uh, Toolformer, which is about uh, teaching uh, the uh, LLM to use tools. And I think it's the first one that was uh, discussing this. So we start the prompt with, uh, with uh, telling the assistant what it is, as uh, Yuval just instructed us. And of course, a uh, little flattery is never, uh, never does harm. So we start with, you are the best assistant ever. And then we give it the dialogue and we say, the user says, Alexa, what's the weather like in Jerusalem tomorrow? And then we say, Alexa. And here we wanna uh, fine tune the model or train it uh, to be able to reply, not with an answer about the weather, but rather with a call to some tool, right? And then we ask it to extract from the tool the information we need as uh, somewhere and extract from the dialogue the information we need to call the, to pass into the uh, to the tool, which is where we want the weather, which which is in Jerusalem, and when we want it, which is tomorrow. And once we've done that, we can either have the tool finish the conversation by saying, um, "Bring your sunglasses; it's going to be sunny," or we can send it back to Alexa and train it to use another tool, okay? We show it uh, the prompt and we say, okay, you wanted me to call the weather service. I called the weather service. I got the data back, which says it's gonna be sunny. And now what I expect or wanna train you is to output, to tell me I need to call the output function and I need to tell the user that it's gonna be sunny. Don't forget your sunglasses. So this seems to work and this is very nice. Let's see if we can tackle a more complicated uh, situation. In this case, I'm saying to, the, uh, to Alexa, Alexa, I wanna buy a jacket for my trip to Jerusalem. Mm. This is a bit beefier because this is something we probably wouldn't have an intent for, right? I wanna buy a jacket, what do I need to do? So first thing, I need to go look up the weather in Jerusalem, right? And then once I have the weather, this is kind of an input to another reasoning where I say, okay, the weather is sunny, I probably need a light jacket. Let's do the uh, search for products that are relevant for that. So let's see how this could work. Um, and this is in the spirit of something called AutoGPT. I don't know if uh, everyone has had the chance to uh, get exposed to that. This is kind of uh, 
Yuval also presented something similar to that, which is taking the uh, logics and breaking it down to steps so that we can do them. Um, so in this case, you're the best assistant ever, flattery. And here's a conversation, and we put the conversation here. And then we can say, okay, these are the tools. You have tools, you can use them. And then ask, please come up with a plan to use the tools to answer the question. And since we're lazy and we want to use this for calling APIs, we're going to ask it in JSON. Why not? And surprise, surprise, this actually works. Um, so you can see you get two steps in this case. Uh, first step, ID one, is invoke get weather with the parameter Jerusalem. This would bring us the weather in Jerusalem, which is probably sunny. And then the second step says search to buy. Okay, we supposedly have a uh, function that searches to buy stuff. And the parameters are the jacket because I want to buy a jacket. But the second parameters, as you can see, is step one dot result, which is, okay, take the step, the result that came for step one, which would probably be sunny, and also send it to as a constraint to the search for the thing I want to buy. So hopefully, once we've executed this, uh, we get the answer, check out these summer jackets, and probably Alexa is suggesting you some summer jackets. That's super cool. So um, we're done. We're good to launch, right? Well, not really. Um, so the elephant in the room, and again, Yuval mentioned that, um, practically what's happening is that the thing I just showed you is uh, GPT-4 reasoning about this question, and GPT-4 takes a several seconds. So you don't have the latency for that in Alexa. And also you don't have access to GPT-4 in Alexa um, until Yuval brings us a comp comparable model. Um, so you can see that there are many uh, uh, articles coming out uh, practically maybe once a week and with everyone uh, coming up with uh, systems to try and do this with smaller models that can do this uh, quicker and can do this um, uh, with uh, more um, mitigate the cost. And on top of this being a, in a constant change, the models available are also constantly changing. So we kind of running after the wind with this, trying to understand what's going on uh, in the landscape, trying to understand how we can do things more efficiently and what models we have available for us uh, to do this. So, okay, we're done. Right, we found a theoretical possible path to solving the problem, and then now it's just about implementation. So um, we're kind of uh, happy and know that we're going in a, to a good place. So next thing I I want to uh, share with you about our uh, journey is uh, less about the end customer, but about the developer. Right? What what does uh, the development process look like? in the world of uh, dominant LLMs uh, in our systems. So one of the things we need to build um, is the actions or the tools. Um, and this is sort of standard, right? We build tools, this is procedural code. It does, uh, it does uh, it's deterministic. It always uh, gets the same answer. We know how to build these and we know how to test them. Uh, we do unit tests and we do stuff like that. So that's sort of okay. But when we try to think about the LLM, um, our world is about to change. And I want to quote here. Um, does anyone know uh, who this quote is from? I saw an angel in the marvel and carved until it, I set it free, right? It's from uh, Michelangelo. Um, this is David, his famous statue. And what Michelangelo said is that David was already in the slab of, uh, of marble when he started uh, chipping away at this. So when we put an LLM in the center of our system, um, there's already someone in there and they will gladly answer the right question, the right answer or the wrong, the wrong answer, but they're already there. So we need to think about how we shape this, uh, this new counterpart we have. And of course, 
the two things we have available to us are uh, prompt engineering and um, and fine tuning. And the way we think about uh, development and the way we're starting to realize that uh, we're going to have to uh, use things here is, of course, building the training sets, sets. And the first cycle of this is having many examples of the um, prompt we're going to use and then the answer we're expecting. So in this case, this is the weather example and the tool we're expecting. And then we're going to run this. Some of this we're going to run for training, but some of this we also have to run for evaluation, right? To know where our model stands. Because if we don't have the data and we can't evaluate, we don't know nothing. It's not procedural code. It doesn't, do, it doesn't always do the same thing. So we'll probably run some of our examples, get the answer, compare it to the, um, to the expected answer, which is also non-trivial because the answers could be a bit different, right? If it doesn't, if instead of returning Jerusalem here, it returns the coordinates of Jerusalem, that should also pass, right? And my tool should also be able to handle this. And same thing about tomorrow, if it passes me a, a date, I should also be able to handle that. So this is non-trivial. And of, on top of that, we probably want to have also an end-to-end -end cycle of testing, right? So if I say I want to buy a jacket for my trip to Jerusalem and I expect it to be, sorry, if I want to, ah, I got the wrong answer. <laughs> okay, let's imagine we ask about, about what the weather is and the answer is it's sunny. I want to also evaluate this as a, an end-to-end -end evaluation and we'll also have to do that. And this is going to be changing quite frequently, right? At least for the foreseeable future, because we have many teams developing uh, training data sets for many different uh, applications and for many different tools. And we also have anything changing around here would also require retraining, right? If I put a new model into the system, I need to take all my data sets and I need to run them again against the new model to train it again. And if I don't have a way of evaluating, I don't even know what's going on because every time I train the model with a new data set, there is a regression or there could be some regression in the performance of the old data sets. So this whole thing is going to become very important in our lives. And we're already building some tools for this, both for generating training data, for running the training uh, at scale and for evaluating uh, our systems. So this is uh, a bit about the journey uh, we're doing at Alexa. It's exciting times, as I said. Um, thanks for listening. I'm Asher Barak. I'll be around here. Happy to answer any questions and to get to know people. <laughs>